When people ask me where I'm from, I often have trouble answering the question. Do I tell them in my obvious American accent that I'm from Australia? If I do, then I struggle to explain my family's complicated past, my dad's death, and how I ended up here. The truth is, I never knew the full story of how I ended up here, and for the last 23 years, I blame my mom for that. So I decided I would go back to Australia to look for answers. At the last minute, my mom and brother decided to join me. I started my investigation into the past by talking to the people my dad knew best. So you don't remember specifically the details about how you guys met? I think it was through my, like a, my brother being a bricklayer and he used to work with uh, Henry mm -hmm. and that's how we sort of got to meet each other and then we used to go um, out all the time together and that, like to the bars down Frankston. Mm -hmm. He was talking about going to America. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I wouldn't mind doing something like that. And he said, oh, might as well go tag along. And then we were at LA for about a week with friends of Henry's. Bought a car each. We're driving from LA to San Diego. Then we're driving down the road for a couple of kilometers. I'm tuning my radio in and Henry's veered off. And I'm supposed to follow him. And because I was tuning the radio, I was like, oh no, I've missed it. <laughs> and I kept on ringing LA all the time to hope you know, Henry would ring up the, um, all the people who we first, his friends and that. But he didn't ring it up there, then he finally did after about four or five months. And then the family, he's still in San Diego, and that's when we caught up again. And that's where I met with Lucy's mum and that. So the night I met your dad, it was a work night. I was supposed to be at home, going to bed so I could get up early. But my girlfriends, my roommate, kept calling me, inviting me down. It's Dollar Margarita night. They'd met these two Aussies. They were having so much fun. So I was like, against my better judgment, I went. Henry and I started talking and just talking and talking. They were all over each other, kissing. This was at a bar? Yeah, right? yeah, kissing and cuddling and whatever. They closed the bar, kicked us out. So we went and sat in the car and just talked all night until it was time for me to go to work. For some reason, I don't even know why, I took his driver's license so that I knew he'd see me again. <laughs> and I sort of joked to him, I said, well, you should do what they do in the movies, just go, go to Vegas and get married. And like, no kidding, like within an hour, we packed up the car and we drove, I think six, six, six hour drive. The next, oh, they got married in one of the little chapels here. tell anybody we got married. The only evidence was the receipt. Until a year later, when we told everybody, but we made it sound like we'd just gotten married, because we'd only known each other 10 days. Henry'd been talking this whole time that uh, he had a block of land paid off in Australia, and he always wanted to build a house, and it's like, well, let's go to Australia. 
I still don't understand this timeline. Which part? You always told me. Oh, you've been to Fiji before? Like, what? That's what my parents were doing! They have this mask and it was like, has my name on it. So I was like, this is when you went to Fiji? And I'm like, when? And she's like, you were in here or something. When? She told me, oh, so you were conceived there. Yeah, no, 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 you were conceived in Mexico. No, yeah. you yeah. told me Fiji. No, you, uh, no, because we stuck in Fiji on the yeah, way Yeah, they stopped in Fiji on the way here. Oh. I was pregnant with you when we were but she, <laughs> but she was conceived here. Oh. <laughs> oh. Because we came here after we got married. After when 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 Kate left Henry and Lisa, he came back to some yeah, to, to inform me. To marry her. To marry me. When my mom and dad moved to Australia, my dad started building our house right away. He worked all day, every day, until it was finished. Don't you think it's weird knowing that your dad laid every brick? Every brick. And then came the time to move in. Nobody felt really healthy. But eventually, the kids and I got over it, and Henry didn't. You heard like the the brickwork. He thought he's allergic to the sand or whatever, and yeah. and he he um, put seal all over, and he lived in the you know he lived in the shed out the yeah. back. Yeah. Henry had a shed. He used to sleep there. Where? At if the you house. Eat at yeah. your house. Because of buzzing because inside. Because he buzzing inside. That time you didn't remember. I don't remember that part. But yeah, he used to come inside for his meals and then he'd um, go in the shed and that. Because I said, you know, look, do you want to swap houses like just for a, a month or so to see if it made any difference or whatever? But yeah, that didn't happen, but yeah. He started seeing a doctor, find out what it was. Just seemed to get more frustrated with not feeling well. And when you look back now, it was like that was the start of it. Of an episode. But when you're young, you don't take much notice of that sort of thing. You think, oh, yeah, he'll be all right. You know, he's just going through a state of mind for a little while. He'll get better. Then he went to naturopaths. He went to herbalists. And then he got into the herbal life. Yeah. And then he yeah, bought a whole heap of that. So he rang me up at 6 o'clock one morning and asked me if I wanted to buy a whole heap and go in. And I, I said, I hope it works for you, Henry, but yeah, I don't, I think it's a bit of a scam personally, but yeah, and he went for it, so yeah, I think he had another like half a garage full of the stuff. I mean, we had the brick dust tested in the city, and I mean, it was I mean, it wasn't that. It wasn't no, it wasn't that. It was in his head. Yeah, I have some sort of memory of this. The fire. I'm sure you do. He was pulling out all the chemicals underneath the sink, everywhere. And there was, you know, I have this I have this memory of like being in the living room and him throwing my toys in the yes. bed. Yes. And then maybe him picking me up yes. and swinging me around. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Do I like it for a minute? No. Sure? No, mm -hmm. oh, hot. <laughs> my cry. He would have burned the house down. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, are you yeah, kidding? He's throwing yeah. aerosol cans in the fireplace. Yeah, and yeah, it scared yeah. the hell out of me. Yeah. So I grabbed the kids and we went over to Mary's house. He told me, you've got to call the hospital. They've got to do something. They wanted to know if he had weapons, if he had drugs, if he had all this stuff, which he didn't. I mean, that wasn't him. They told me he, they had to take him in. I remember looking at him, looking in his eyes, and it wasn't him. He was he was gone. There was somebody else. But he was calm and he didn't put up a fight. And he just went with them and they told me that they would notify me as soon as I could go see him. Next thing I knew, Henry was home. And that was because his parents had had him released. In my opinion, he wasn't ready. They hadn't um, regulated his meds. Um, they put him on lithium, but they were still adjusting the dosage. He was on Rohypnol to sleep, and he would take one or two of those at night and still not sleep. 
and I don't know how that's possible. He was frustrated. I know he was hurting because he didn't feel good. It got to a point with everything that we'd done that I knew it had to be mental. I'd line him up with a job, like a bricklaying job, and, what, and he just sent. I rang him on the phone and, and I'm like trying to get him because he was, hadn't been working for a while, just trying to get him motivated. And that, and then uh, you could sound like he was like disinterested. Mary and I had made plans. Um, Barney was coming to town. Henry would always drop us off at the train station. Whenever we were going into the city or doing something that involved the train, we only had the one car, so he would drop us off. This one morning when we're getting ready to go into the city, he told me to take the car. And I thought that was kind of odd. We got to the door, we're getting ready to leave. I always asked the kids if they kissed Daddy goodbye. And they both said yes, and I wasn't quite sure about Ridge. So I sent Ridge back into the bedroom to kiss Daddy goodbye. Got in the car, drove to the train station, met Mary, went to the show, had a good time. Then we came back home, and as I was pulling into the driveway, I saw a police car. So as I went in, they pulled me aside, and they told me he'd killed himself. What was that like for you afterwards? Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I wasn't happy with him. Mm. Hey, but he must have been a lot of pain. To protect us, which he always did, um, he called his nurse and told him what he was going to do. But he knew the time schedule, so he knew that Lori could not get there in time to save him. It was done when we got home, except, you know, for the fact he was gone. You remember all the the last pieces, mm -hmm. the times, the last, the very last time you'd seen him, mm -hmm. I saw him, and you remember those, and then you never, you never get, get to that out of your head that, you know, you're in the car with him, I was with him, and we're talking, and he looked very sad and depressed, and he said, look, I can't do this anymore, and I said, what do you mean you can't do, what? Oh, just everything, is everything just gone on top of me and um, and he said I just want to end it I said what do you mean you want to end it you've got kids and all that you know you'll be alright and I sort of should have taken more notice I never thought he'd do that and then three weeks after it happened and that was the last time I saw him. Mm -hmm. I spoke to him the day before, like the night before. I just thought, and then he, I just, I just thought, you know, I would have had warning signs or whatever. But no, he gave me no hint at all. 
I knew I had to make the kids' lives as normal as possible. So, you know, they still went to school, they still did their activities. Yes. We had the chickens in the backyard, uh -huh. yeah. and I would go out and get the eggs every day, right? Yes. And I noticed one of the chickens were gone, and that night we had chicken soup. I'm sure. And I'm pretty sure okay. that I cried. <laughs> <laughs> did this actually happen? Yes, it did. <laughs> Your grandmother cooked that chicken. <laughs> yeah. I figured. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. No, that it was it was dead and dead. Not, it was dead. And when the chicken died, that made it easier for me to explain to you what had happened to your dad. Oh. Ah. Oh. So it's you're... like, okay, did you see the chicken not moving? Ah. Oh. <laughs> that, that because you guys were only two and five. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't have anything to relate yeah, to, to death, to death. Yeah. but you knew the chicken had died. When Henry died, his parents had gone on vacation. And when they came back into town, they came over to the house. Henry's mom sat on the couch, no emotion. All she kept talking about was her other son, David, and how she needed to get home to fix him a meal because he hadn't had a home-cooked meal for however long they were gone. Hi. This is what we saw. Hi. Where do you think I am? <laughs> Not We're in Surfer's Paradise. just arrived. Yeah. Oh no. Uh-huh. Is he okay? It's about 7 o'clock right now, and we thought we were going to see our grandparents today, but when I called, uh, she didn't seem that excited to talk to me. Didn't really give me an answer about what our, her plans are, and put us on the phone with David, our uncle, and he said that he would take our number and call us back, and that was around maybe 12, 30, or 1. It's a little disappointing. We've decided to drink tonight instead of... I'm just getting started. Meet her, I guess. Yeah, and we came all the way to Gold Coast just to see her. <laughs> she was always like... She was late to Henry's service. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think wait. she was at the service. Yeah, she was. She was they, there. She they were there like a half an hour But late. she wasn't at <laughs> So we had to wait. Her heart was in the right place, but she couldn't carry it out. I think his mom was in denial of anything that was wrong with him. My other feelings and this is me personally, Henry, as good as he was and as hardworking as he was, could never seem to get his mom's love or approval. And I think that was a factor. I will go to my death thinking that was a factor. I don't know what changed. Maybe she... I don't know. Maybe it got too real. Maybe I also think maybe, like... Happen. She doesn't believe it. Maybe she thinks that we're like pretending. Maybe she thinks it's somebody else. Like they call some sort of Australian number. I know. I mean, maybe you could fake that. But, but some sort of scam, you know. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Is this David? Lisa. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Good. How are you? 
Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, just there. Yeah, been running around. Yeah, mum's yeah, had, a, had another appointment. She's not she's not very well at the moment. Oh no. But um, yeah, yeah not no no big big problem, mum. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, give you a call later on. Um, do you, is there any chance you uh, we we can catch up just with you and Rich or not? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. There's no problem. There's no, yeah, we've got you know. Is it okay that we still film? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. Yeah, okay. no, it's, yeah, it'd be better if yeah, you just just used two guys come, you know. Okay. Come over and see the yeah, see the grandparents and um, yeah. yeah that'd, that'd be that'd be good. Yeah. So um, okay, give, give, give us a call when you're about like ten, fifteen minutes away or something. Whenever, leave it. Yeah, leave it till twelve, one o'clock if if that's a good time for you. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Hear from you then. Okay. Okay, bye. Sounds good. See you soon. Okay, so Rich, bye-bye. Bye-bye. She did love him, but I think he loved him more than she did. Because at the first husband and she didn't love I don't look nobody you, you knows. Know what? He just passed away. The kids got information on him. He just Are you sure? Away. I didn't know he was in Queensland. I didn't she had never said anything. I asked Elizabeth and George if they know him because I thought they knew him. And I started. thought he was in Hungary. I never, I never knew. knew I never met here. him because when I, I didn't either. Uh, and Henry never talked about him. So I don't think Henry knew. No, he never. So she had him, and I think three or four days later, boom, she kicked him out and never saw him again. You know, the, the person you thought was your grandfather isn't actually your natural yeah. grandfather. So. This is the, the marriage of your grandmother to Mr. Tassler in oh, 1957 huh. in Victoria. And then he was born in 58. Yeah. It was really short. <laughs> and uh, this is your grandfather. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You can see it now. That's where the eyes come from. Right? Am I right? <laughs> Those are the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I get the impression that um, he hadn't quite um, been completely honest when he arrived in Australia about some of his health issues. Oh. And at some stages they were looking to try and perhaps deport him back to Europe. Mm. But I think they went down the road of, well, you know, he can't go back to, they'll put him in prison or kill him if he goes back home, mm. etc, etc, etc. So I think that's why he was um, allowed to stay. His mom came over on her own, came in the house, started yelling at me and telling me that Henry's death was my fault. I said, you've got to get out of this house. You need to get out of this house. And she wouldn't leave the house. So I tried to physically escort her out of the house, got her to the front door, made her get out, and told her, don't you ever come back here again and accuse me of that. It wasn't me. At that point, I pretty much barricaded us in the house. I made sure all the curtains were closed all the time. I left the car in the garage all the time so they would never know if we were home or not. In the meantime, making plans to come back home. Here. I have to hold both of these? Yes, and then we'll switch. I can't do this fucking thing and then do all the shit. Okay, then I hold this. Just knock, stupid. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. How are you? Good. Come in. Come in. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. Rich. Yes. I get hugs too. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Already you make a photo. <laughs> you're beautiful. Oh, you are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you're well, more beautiful than you? I can imagine. You are more beautiful. You. <laughs> Growing up? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you might work in there. No, no, I should be though. <laughs> you are absolutely beautiful. You play football? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah, you did. I did for a year, yeah. but it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't for me, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> You must remember. You remember. A little bit. <laughs> you're, my, oh, but you're so beautiful. I thought, and you're I thought, so I thought, handsome. I thought Ridge would end up being shorter. <sighs> no, no, I'm taller. I'm taller than Mom. I'm taller than everybody. You are, you are a beauty yeah. queen. You are a beauty you're not a queen. You're a beauty queen. You're a beauty queen. You're a beauty queen. You're a beauty A letter came in the mail. Henry's parents were suing me for the money Henry had borrowed to build, finish building the house. I don't even remember how much the amount was. And there was also a little clause that they were suing for custody of my kids. I was packing things and getting things ready. We had a huge garage sale. Um, my girlfriends, Carol and Mary, helped me organize that. Um, I'm not sure what my other friends thought about the garage sale. I don't know if they knew I was leaving, but I basically couldn't tell anybody because I didn't know if they'd tell Margaret and Andrew. And I did not want to be stopped at the airport and have my kids take it away. So I pretty much did it undercover. Yeah, yeah. Finish my drink. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? I don't want whiskey. I want Tia Maria. <laughs> Darling, you, you tell this one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you guys oh, drink a lot? That's no, for no, your no, future no. and for your best health. No, no, no. Thank you. Lovely. <laughs> that's not hot. Is it hot enough? Oh my gosh. Is that what I think it is? I remember this. <laughs> that's why I did it. Thank because you. Because you said. Remember that <laughs> that Spanish dish? Yes. <laughs> and I made it for, Thank for you. us. Because I love it too. <laughs> I think it's hot enough. Do you yeah. know what she made? Mm -hmm. The cream spinach. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I do too. <laughs> I tried to make it myself. I can't. Uh, no. It's not the same. You just got to know how to make the white sauce. Yeah. Yeah, that's secret. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yep. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I understood why the kids wanted to meet the grandparents. They had questions. They wanted to find out for themselves. And I get that. And I never said no or you shouldn't do that. I never did that. Um, I just chose myself personally not to go there. It, no. Because I probably would have lost it and gone off on both of them. I, I would have. Oh, <laughs> my darling. You are more handsome than your father. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. You're more handsome than your father. <laughs> You know, your father was so popular with the girls, you have no idea. You have no idea. The girls just loved him. Mm -hmm. Stupid man. Because he's a stupid man, you know, it's a very, very bad coincidence. 
Ridge is probably most like his dad, I worry. He's exhibited some behavior that's probably textbook. But he doesn't see it and I can't make him see it. You just see Henry in him, both of them. But more this one, Ridge. Like, the, you know, when he got out of the car, just like the same motions, personality, everything was the same. Like if it was Henry, your father, jumping out of the car. Alyssa's recognized some of the things in herself and she's gone on to take care of that with medication. and So I think she's gonna be okay. Medication has certainly improved my quality of life, and so has therapy, which comes in many forms for me. Traditional counseling, having a genuine conversation with a friend, or even just cuddling my cat are all things I do to take care of my mental health. To start the healing process of my childhood trauma, I needed to face it head on, even if it meant traveling to the other side of the world. I needed a lot of closure. I never got to say goodbye to a lot of people, including Kay and Navalua, which was tough because they were close to Henry's parents and I, I couldn't take a chance of telling people. And so when I saw them, it was like, everything was erased. I mean, they were, they were still my best friends. All of our friends took such good care of them. This is the part that, this is an emotional part for me because they all took such good care of us while we were there. Um, they told me if they had known, they would have helped me stay. Um, I, you know, who knows what would have happened. The thing that um, made me feel the best about the trip was once we got home and all the stories that I told and everything from my perspective, and my daughter sent me a text that said, I believe you. <sighs> yeah. There was a time when I didn't believe it would be possible to have a relationship like this with my mom. I've gotten to this place because we are finally able to face our unresolved history. It doesn't matter if I never have all of the answers. I still had to examine and reconcile the past in order to move forward.